welcome to Visual Recreation, the essential video guide to winning FML each and every week. I'm your local stunt double, Drew. And I'm Joey, of course, your strategy guy. And this week, we're going to keep it short and sweet for all of you viewers out there, because we're going to be talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Short and sweet, fun fact, was my nickname in high school. Really? Now, Quentin Tarantino premieres his ninth film this weekend when his two leads, a former Western TV star and a his stunt double are stuck in a Hollywood and feel out of position in a Hollywood uh, they don't recognize. Also, there's Charles Manson. Yeah, now, uh, this movie was written and directed by Quentin Tarantino, who's given us the cult classic Pulp Fiction, Django Unchained, and The Hateful Eight. Now, this movie stars Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie, Al Pacino, Kurt Russell, Ooh. and Dakota Fanning. So, a lot of big names in this one. That's right. Now, this movie runs around 2 hours and 40 minutes, which is... Better than, uh, say, the runtime of Hateful Eight, which was like three hours, three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact, if you go on Netflix, it's four hours, and it's all in, it's a series now. Oh. Um, and it currently holds a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yes, now the Pro Box Office has the long-range forecast of this movie in the high 40 millions for this weekend. That's right. Now, when I'm looking at this one, now... I'm coming at it from a Tarantino uh, fan. Okay. I've seen all of his movies. I own all of his movies, um, Blu-ray even, and um, I like them. I have my ticket for this one on Thursday that it comes out. Um, however, I just don't know. I mean, it, the long-range forecast has been tracking up, down, up, down, and now it's kind of tracking downward. Um, for high 40s, I just don't know about this one. I think it has a little bit more, it's, I mean, the runtime helps it. It's not three and a half hours or yeah. four hours uh, like The Hateful Eight. However, I don't know how much curb appeal this one has. I think it's going to definitely resonate with his uh, niche group of Tarantinoites. Um, however, I just don't know. Uh, so I'm cautiously putting this around the low to low 40s, high 30s okay. that it could get. Uh, just from what we've seen in the box office trend this summer. Uh, not a lot of things have been hitting its long range forecast. They've all been kind of ducking under just slightly, some slightly, some really way off. So this one I have it coming around low 40s, mid high 30s. Okay, very cool. Now this, this movie did make its world premiere uh, back in May at the Cannes Film Festival. And it did get, I mean, an over, overall positive response. Um, I'm sure there was a few naysayers in there. I mean, the one reporter yeah. that asked Tarantino why he, if it was deliberate mm -hmm. that he gave Margot Robbie such small lines or no lines at all, mm -hmm. and uh, Margot Robbie came to his side and said that, oh, well, that's just how the story was written, and that's how I acted, and I got to act it in a different way than, say, having a dialogue heavy. Yeah. Uh, but that's the main part that I remember of this movie. Like, I haven't seen a ton of ads for it, but mm -hmm. that part on Twitter of the female reporter asking him about Margot Robbie's uh, so few lines went viral on Twitter. So I was like, ooh, yeah. maybe that's not the biggest publicity uh, you could get. Yeah, maybe not, but still more than enough people, I guess, liked the film. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people were saying this was Tarantino's love story for the 60s in LA. Um, Especially Charles Manson? Well, I mean, of course, there was some dividing. They were divided on on the ending, of course. Okay. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen the movie yet. I wasn't at the world premiere, but just reporting the news to I'm you guys. I'm just saying, not everything in the 60s in Hollywood oh, was no, something to be no. a love letter about. No, right. But, I mean, if we're talking, like, a love letter from Quentin Tarantino, who does, like, some gory, uh, like, bloody movies, I mean, you can expect some of that. Yeah. And, and see... That's true see the reason why people would say that about one of his films. Um, but I do agree with what you're talking about um, with the numbers rising and falling. I can definitely see this not quite hitting the long range forecast. Uh, like you said, a lot of the movies haven't been really doing that uh, so far this season in FML and um, for this movie to come in mid 30 million, I, I can see that possible, like mid 30s. All right. Well, so. Okay. It looks like we're uh... Hitting on the same wavelength there, Joey. Yes. It's almost like you're the Western TV star and I'm the stunt double. Hey, that is quite the coincidence. I just want to be Brad Pitt. Yeah. Go for it. All right, cool.
But that's all we have for you this week. Good luck in Fantasy Movie League, picking your Cineplexes, fighting for the top spot in your Fantasy Movie League. Um, and as always, remember, sometimes, sometimes you, you gotta, gotta risk it to get, get that biscuit. biscuit.